You creep out the door and into the fog near the turnstiles. The stack on the radio continues softly. The rest of the place seems hung chilled in silence. The turnstile clicks to admit you as you slip into the park. It's quiet, though you contemplate turning off the damn radio since the stack is getting louder. You head towards the nearest ride, the carousel. As you approach it, you notice there aren't any horses. There are... Ugh, I don't even know what those are. Shaking off a long moment of indecision, you ignore the fleshy carousel for now and follow the arrows marked on the ground. After a moment, you come onto what looks like some kind of vending machine. The pink lights twinkle and pierce the swirling mist. You get a closer look at the machine. Most of the slots in its row of glass cases are empty, but one of them holds a key. You sigh with a feeling of annoyed deja vu. There is no way that you're not going to need that key somehow. Unfortunately, it looks like the machine only takes park tokens. You give up on the blasted machine for now. Looks like you need a token. Of course. Well, there were midway games listed in the brochure. As much as you don't want to, you head off into the swirling mist. It's impossible to navigate through the deep, cold mist. And as you walk, you become more and more certain you have totally lost your way. Strange shapes loom everywhere, but none of them looks like a landmark. Finally, the mist clears a little bit, and you see what looks like a gate. Is that an entrance to a ride? Maybe? As you peer at it, you notice someone's standing there, headed down the stairway. Oh, it's that Marissa woman! You feel the urge to hum the Mission Impossible theme while following her. But that's probably counterproductive to sneaking, though the tune still plays in your head as you walk softly behind her. As you do, she disappears down the dark stairwell. You can hear the click of her high heels on the concrete steps, and she vanishes out of view. You begin to creep down the stairs after her, and she soon lost your vision in the darkness of this unlit stairwell. As you descend down the stairs, darkness swallows you. In the distance, you hear a siren cry. You turn around as everything goes black and the siren howls. Marissa can fall down the stairs of the House of Mirrors by herself. You, on the other hand, are booking it. You turn around and run back up the stairs, only to discover a dawning horror as you look around. The fog is gone. That's good. Right? Oh, fuck. You dig into your coat to find your weapon. The only thing you have right now is this nearly useless knife. The rest of your inventory seems intact, except... Wait, your cell phone is missing. You walk behind the stairs, where before there was only a fence and a wall. You're not sure what's there now. Water? Empty space? Chunks of rocks seem to be floating on whatever it is. There's a cool breeze. The air rushes by your ears like a whisper. Or a woman's voice. The other direction, where you must have come from while wandering through the fog, now seems to be a long, cavernous chamber lit by pink carnival track lights along the edges. The sound is stronger here almost rushing past your ears along with a thin, watery drip. You get close to the shore and kneel down, putting your fingers in whatever it is the rocks are floating in. Little to your prize, it's cool and slimy on your fingertips, almost tingly. You're pulling your fingers away when you realize the stuff is stretching, oozing up as you pull your hand away, sticking your skin like some kind of oil or glue. You stare at your hand in horror as the sticky, slimy stuff starts to crawl up your fingertips with a strange sensation, oozing over them and spreading further and further up your whole hand. Your heart beats fast, your body is filled with a cold dread, so you realize if you don't do something, this stuff may engulf your whole body. You panic. As the goo moves up your arm, you have to get it off. You know what else they say? If all else fails, use fire. The fire works amazingly. At least, it's on fire now. And so are you. You don't think. You just drop to the ground and start rolling to stop yourself from burning. It works! The flames are smothered out of your smoldering green jacket. You reach for the medical kit, just to find that it must have vanished along with your cell phone. All you have is a stupid energy drink and your trusty cigarettes. You don't even have a band-aid. Your hand is burnt pretty bad. You light up a cigarette and take a long puff of it, cursing your luck. 
You down the energy drink, which is ice cold and in fact surprisingly refreshing. You feel invigorated as you drink it, and even your burn feels a little better. You don't know what's in these. Maybe it's drugs. You feel better, but honestly, you're still pissed. Frankly, you've been nothing but pissed and frightened since all this bullshit started happening. It's time to strike back. You toss the butt of your still burning cigarette into the ooze. The cigarette sinks in the ooze slowly, but first, you watch an eager, almost cruel anticipation for the flammable stuff to come in contact with the fiery tip. Before the fire can touch the ooze, a hand forms the nasty black stuff and grabs it. Slowly, but not nearly slowly enough, a slick, shapeless form of arms and a torso starts to pull itself up onto the ground. It throws the butt to the stone and lies there burning as the oozing monstrosity pulls itself free. You turn around in panic and run away. Sure, you've beaten things like this before, but right now you don't even have a curtain rod to defend yourself. You pitch yourself over the stairs and run back in the long hallway, passing a few open doors and crevices as you run. Luckily, the oozing, schlopping thing squishing its way behind you doesn't seem very fast. You could dodge in one of the rooms on the left or right, or keep running straight ahead, or something. You dodge into one of the rooms on the right and look around. You don't see any weapons immediately, but what you do see is even more surprising. There's a full-sized roller coaster in the cavern, lit by the same tiny pink track lights as out in the hall. For a moment, you contemplate turning on the roller coaster and actually going for a ride. What could be more fun, right? Oh my goodness, you must be going slowly insane for that thought to even occur to you. You should have left when you had the chance. Things only keep getting worse. You have a desperate plan to start the ride. Hopefully the creature will follow it. You dodge in the little shack where you assume the ride controls are. And lucky you, they are. The shack is old and broken down, and bits are covered in black ooze. Or perhaps just nothingness. But it looks like it still might work. You quickly turn the key and punch the green button, starting the machine outside. You hear it whirr and lurch to a start, the cart clicking and clacking on the tracks. Safe, you hope, in the little ride monitor shack, and duck down below the window to wait.